Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you happy today? Praise <laughs> God. Listen, you better be. You know why? God has planned something great for you. Now, if you believe that, join me right now as we make demands for our daily bread. Are you ready? Say with me, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You know, we've been talking all month about being formed in the image of God. And our case scripture have been in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. You are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had preordained that you should walk in. I was sharing something with you yesterday. The good work that God has ordained. So the good work means it's the... Now notice, notice something. We read in Galatians yesterday that the scriptures foreseen that God will justify the Gentiles, preached the gospel to Abraham. Now let me read it again. Verse 8, Galatians chapter 3. And the scripture foreseeing that God will justify the, un the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Now, God preached this message to Abraham. And that gave Abraham a world vision. That gave Abraham the sight to think and know that God wants to bring the whole earth under his fatherhood. He wants to be responsible for the whole, just the same way he was responsible for Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He was fully responsible for them. He gave them food to eat. He, he, he gave them everything they needed. He was, he planted the garden. He did. And, and the truth is, as they were multiplying, God would have been taking care of them and just multiplying and expanding the garden and expanding the garden. Yes, until the whole world become like the garden. The principle of living in that garden was to be replicated around the earth. God, just like from the beginning, wanted to show his love. Now, this is the reason we do not play with the encounters that Abraham had with God. We need to study and study until the Lord opens our eyes to see. So you find God visiting Abraham in the person of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek communicated some truths to Abraham and told Abraham, look, Abraham, now tithes everything that you have and abraham gave the tithe of all now that was the time now you remember all the wealth abraham ever acquired he acquired by faith yes he acquired by faith by faith he went to gera to abimelech and I told you a few days ago, I told you it was God that told Abraham what to say, how to enter the city. And so they got in there, you know the story, oh, she's my sister. Oh, why, why did you tell us? The, oh, why didn't you tell us? Okay, take, take, take goods, take gold, take silver. He was blessed because God told that baby, like, that guy is a prophet. You better go let him pray for it. The same thing happened with Pharaoh. In Pharaoh's case, God did not speak to Pharaoh. He just shut the womb of every womb in Pharaoh, both humans and animals. Nothing produced. And when Pharaoh tried to investigate spiritually, he now found out that something is wrong with this man. They found out and they said, oh, please, please, please take gold, silver, take gold. Well, here was Abraham now going, he had Lot has been captured. So out of love for Lot, he decided we can't let this go. He went for the battle captured Lot and every other person, not only all, all that, they got all the goods these people captured from, from, from the nations they attacked. So Abraham was carrying all this wealth. Now they were his own. Those are the spoils of war, understandably. They were the spoils of war. 
And the king of Sodom knew that. Every king knows that. If I come and assist you for warfare and my men fight your war for you, we will rescue your city, we will rescue your people, but the goods belong to us. That's always the deal for war partnership. Because even then they had, they had situations where they had to call mercenaries to come and fight for them. So the deal is always that you take the goods, whatever you capture is yours, all the good things, just restore our people because that's our dignity. So when Abraham was coming back with all those things, Abraham knew. So I hear people say, Abraham tithed what does not belong. It is not true. It belonged to him. They were the spoils of war. So Abraham was carrying these things and I believe was rejoicing. And he said, oh God, thank you for this victory you've given to us. And then he met Melchizedek. And Melchizedek said, Abraham, we're going to do something. Remember, the Bible says Melchizedek brought bread and wine. So there was a covenant that was caught that day between Abraham and Melchizedek. Melchizedek came as a, as, as a priest of the Most High. Now, the book of Hebrews gives us a clear understanding of who this man was. It wasn't clear in the days of Abraham because he came like a man. So Abraham met a man, Abraham met a human being, okay? I mean, he, he had a body, he, he dressed like a prince, and also he dressed like a king. So he met Abraham and told Abraham, Abraham, look, here is bread and wine. I want us to cut a covenant. You will take this from me as a mark. I'm telling you what happened. So Pastor, how do you know this? Why, why do I have the Holy Spirit? You will take this bread and wine, and this means from today, I will be responsible for your life. I'll be responsible for you. Before that day, God had already spoken to him and says, in your seed, in you and your seed, all the families of the earth will be taken care of. So he came now with, they call them the, the emblems or the token of covenants and now Melchizedek brought bread and wine to Abraham and then Abraham was instructed your own part of the covenant is the giving of tithes oh yeah so Abraham took a tenth of everything he actually went around the clothes you know when people say tithe is only of or you only pay tithe of crops and they, how ignorance how ignorance Please be careful who you're listening to, who you pay attention to. The Abraham didn't go rescue animals and, and, and crops and all those things. He, he rescued clothes. So the Bible says Abraham went around everything they got and took out a tithe of all. So if there were clothes, he took out a tithe of the clothes. If there were animals, he took out a tithe of the animals. If there was money, he took out a tithe of the money. Because they had money in those days also. So the Bible said he gave him a tithe of all. He was diligent to check the tithe of everything. Remember, it was a covenant. You don't cut a covenant anyhow. And he brought all to Melchizedek. He said, here's my part of the covenant, like you have said. So Melchizedek received the tithe from Abraham. And of course, he, he didn't take it away. When you read when Abraham met the king of Sodom, you will understand what happened to the tithe. So Melchizedek took it and Abraham received the bread and wine from him and they had dinner that day. They had a feast together that day. So now you find Abraham going to meet the king of Sodom. Now the next thing Melchizedek said to Abraham, he said, Abraham, you're going to do one thing for me. He said, what is it? All these things you have gathered from the war, which, is the spoil, which are the spoils of the war, I don't want you to take not even a shoelace from it. Ah, but, but, no, Abraham, I don't want you. You see, because we have come into a covenant and you are not permitted to get anything by your means anymore. I will provide for you. 
Hey, nah, nah. That was the covenant. <laughs> so God knew that he would be jealous. He told Abraham, I don't want you to take anything. Abraham went, all right, if you say so. Come, Abraham, lift up your hand, your right hand. Say after me, I, I, Abraham, Abraham, will not take, will not take, even a shoelace, even a shoelace, from all these things, from all these things. Now I know you will keep it. Yes, sir, I'll keep it. Okay. Remember, they just call the covenant. And Abraham went before the king of Sodom. I want you to follow this now. Thank you, thank you so much, Abraham. You've done so wonderful. You know what, Abraham? Um, you've helped us, and we really deeply appreciate it. But because he saw Abraham come with the load of everything, he said, "See, we understand these things. Just give us our children and our wives and servants, and keep all the goods." It was not an uncommon thing; it was normal. And Abraham said, no, sir. Hmm? Why? I have sworn, I have lifted up my hand before the Lord Most High. When did he lift his hand before the Lord Most High? Now that's to tell you that Melchizedek was the Lord. And Abraham knew. And the book of Hebrews tells us, that he found out that this man does not have genealogy, no father, no mother, no birth date, no death date. So where did he come from? Where did he go? Yeah, he was the word of God made flesh. And when he finished his assignment, he disappeared. But what he was, the word of God. Now, so Abraham said to the king, he said, I will not take even a shoelace from you, but except that which the servants have eaten and the portion for this one, this one, and this one. Now, you getting the idea what Abraham did with the tithe? Melchizedek told Abraham, remember I told you they had a feast that day, and that's the portion Abraham with his servants ate. And then the portion Abraham was giving for Different people were the portions. Melchizedek instructed him what to do with the rest of the tithes. Melchizedek didn't take the tithe to heaven. That's exactly what happened to the tithe. He was not going to tell the king that, look, I only took the tithe. The guy would not understand that. He said, I'm not taking anything from you. You take your things back, but it's not going to be complete. The reason it's not complete is because the servants have eaten some, then there's a portion for this, 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 and that. Oh, okay. Wow, Abraham, you've done so well. You've done, you're such a noble man. Yeah. And I just feel Abraham said, yeah, mm, so you say. <laughs> it was paining him. <laughs> but he had to obey God. But, but get it. A covenant was cut that Day. And what is the covenant? I'm going to bless all the families of the earth through you. God promised it. Then he confirmed it that day by the receiving of tithes from Abraham. You see, Galatians chapter 3 tells us that even though it is the law of a man, the moment it is confirmed, even though it's a promise made to man, the moment it is confirmed, it cannot be annulled. So that day, by tithing and receiving bread and wine, the covenant was cut and confirmed. God is tied to fulfilling what he said to Abraham. And what did he say to Abraham? In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And so Abraham had to teach his children concerning that. 
That's why you find Jacob, when he was lost with nothing, stood before the Lord the day he met God and said, if you will bless me. No, that's another thing. That's another misconception people have. Oh, this titan. You know, people that are against titan, they, they are ignorantly against titan. They don't even know what Titan is. So they, they received a lie concerning Titan and they begin to fight that lie concerning Titan and say, ah, this is not true. This cannot be true. They've not known the truth concerning Titan yet. So Abraham knew he had to teach his children, his children concerning Titan. So Jacob said, if you will bless me indeed, now you understand that the titan doesn't come before the blessing. The titan comes after the blessing. It is the bless from the blessing you take out the tithes. You don't go to God and say, God, I want to, I want to tithe so that you will bless me. No. Titan is recognizing that this blessing came from the Lord. That's what titan is all about. It's re recognizing that the blessing came from the Lord. And two... Why did God demand for Titan? Because of the promise he made to Abraham that in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. If he's going to take care of all the families of the earth, he is not raining it down from heaven. I told you the blessing is to take care of, to give you something. So he made provision here on earth to fulfill that promise that he made to Abraham. And listen, it's not because he liked Abraham's face. That thing has been in his heart right from the Garden of Eden. He found Abraham a worthy man to start that journey with him. And that promise was not to be fulfilled until after Christ has come. Because the seed is Christ. Not Christ as in Jesus but we that are in Christ. So here today, the, the promise is all the families of the earth will be taken care of. And how do that happen? This is the reason God ordained that we pay tithes. And that's the reason where if you don't pay tithe as a child of God, you are stealing. It's, you are robbing God. This has nothing to do with Old or New Testament. You are robbing God. Why? Because see that money is the money that God has set aside to bless all the families of the earth with. And you are supposed to receive from the Lord and take out his portion, which is the time. And you are supposed to present it to the Lord as a Christ, as one who's in Christ. You are supposed to take that blessing, that tithes, 10%. That's what he asked for. Eh, it's too small. Can you fulfill the covenant? It is a covenant. You can't change it. You can't change it. He's not asking for all your money. Not because, oh, he's not being stingy. He's not, do you understand what a covenant is? Those of you that got married in certain traditions, you know the truth. In every marriage rite, there is a diary or the bride price. Sometimes the bride price might be ridiculous, but you have to give it. You might spend millions of money to organize that wedding and buy things for everybody, do souvenirs, rent the best of all. The bride price might be 25 kobo. And there must be a ceremony where that bright price of 25 kobo or its equivalent is received. If that is not done, every other ceremony you have done, they will tell you it was nothing. Tomorrow you come back and say, we came to we married. Say, you married, did you pay bright? What? All the money we spent? No, did you pay bright price? Why? Because that is the covenant. That makes that family release their daughter to you. So when people talk about uh, eh, what is 10%, eh, hey, 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 it's a covenant. Covenant of sustenance. 
That is what we take before the Lord and say, Lord, remember we are created to do the good works that we have been preordained to walk in. So I take that 10% before the Lord and say, Lord, he knows how much that 10% is. And he knows where that 10% is needed. He knows the good work he has preordained for that 10%. So you receive 100,000 Naira dollars, that 10%. He knows where it is needed. He knows. You see, before that day of you receiving that tithe, he has already preordained the works that money would do. Is he only money? He says, bless, take care of money, food, good things. So every member of Christ is supposed to be involved in this tithing business. If you are not involved in tithing, you know, you know that the Adeboe said something one time. Maybe a lot of people got, you know, we have a generation that opens their mouth anyhow without thinking. Then Adeboye said something. Now, then Adeboye is of, is of the redeemed church. Okay? He said, anyone who does not pay tight will not make heaven. Ah, how can you say tight to the precursor guy to heaven? Now, listen to me. The good work that God has preordained that you should walk in is what I'm explaining to you. And tithing is a vital part of it. Because through you, all the families of the earth is being taken care of. When you don't tithe, you are not doing the good work. If you are not doing the good work, what are you doing? Which work are you doing? You're working in iniquity. And those that work in iniquity do not make heaven. You will never make heaven. And I told you that iniquity is not fornicating. No, 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 no. If you are not doing the good work that you were preordained to do. Now, this is why we tithe by the Holy Spirit. I'll explain that to you tomorrow because my time is up. Thank you, Jesus. I pray the Lord bless you and, and help you understand these things. In Jesus' name. I'll see you tomorrow.